Hello to all of my lovely patrons. Um, today I wanted to do something a bit special. As you can see, I've uh, dressed up for Christmas. Now, there's a tradition in uh, English Christmas law which says that uh, during the time of Christmas, um, servants should become masters and masters should become ser servants. Um, and I, I've spent the rest of the year asking uh, users of Inkscape to become contributors. Right, people who uh, push the pro project forwards and help us to basically gather the resources necessary to continue development. Um, now, as a developer, I wanted to kind of flip the script and um, become a uh, a user and, and an artist. And so, what I've got planned for today is I'm going to show you how I'm going to make a T-shirt using Inkscape. Uh, it's going to use a, a heat vinyl um, material. Uh, this Brother Scan and Cut machine, I'm going to use the uh, requisite cutting tools and whittling tools that I have here. Uh, and then I'm going to use this heating device, um, which I'll be honest, I don't use for clothes. Um, isn't modern science wonderful with the uh, uh, iron reduced clo clothing. So uh, that being said, thank you for jo joining me today. Uh, I'm going to talk uh, a little bit about the uh, bugs that I fixed this week, but honestly, I'm going to fo focus on making this t-shirt with you today. Uh, and thank you very much for uh, your pat patronage this year. Uh, I want to wish everybody a happy holiday, Christmas, a uh, merry Yule, as as the case may be. Uh, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by unfolding my t-shirt like this and get the front. I need to make a decision about what kind of design I want, how much space I have to work with. These these machines are, are all in inches, so apologies to my uh, European brethren, um, but you work with what, what you have. So I have a cutting machine that will cut up to 12 inches square. So whatever design I make, it has to fit within 12, 12 inches on the t-shirt, which is it's quite, it's quite big actually. Uh, I'm going to do an Inkscape themed um, design. And I'm going to try and use a couple of different uh, colors together and see if I can uh, combine them. So, wish me luck. Okay, so the first thing to do is to make a design. Um, and I've created a 12 inch by 12 inch ca canvas. And I'm just putting in some guides to help me um, just create a barrier. Then what I've done is I've chosen a, a design from the About Screen con contest that, that I particularly liked uh, by, by an artist called Manish. So. A uh, big thank you to, to Manish for this for this design. Um, so I'm just going to break it apart. Okay, now that I've prepared a design and I've separated each of the components into their own SVG files, 
I'm going to um, turn on my cutting machine. I'm going to use USB to transfer uh, the SVG files to the to the machine. Um, I know some of my friends who use cutting machines have cutting machines that require uh, different formats of files, um, and some of them require you to use like online uh, web-based systems that go offline. If you're thinking about buying a cutting machine to, to do some arts and crafts, I highly recommend you look for one that has a USB port and allows you to use SVG directly. Um, it'll save you a lot of time. Um, in this case, what happens when you plug a USB drive in is that it actually turns up as a 10 megabyte uh, USB disk. It's, um, it's actually a pretend USB disk. It, it's There isn't actually... 10, a 10 megabyte SSD in that machine. It's just uh, <clears throat> giving me a 10 megabyte space so I can do do a transfer using a standard protocol, which is pretty nice. Uh, I use a Linux machine, and that means any device that has to have special drivers or like extra software running in the back background is usually a, a bad idea anyway. Um, so let's let's continue. Now, the thing is about the pink layer is the pink layer contains uh, 18,000 points. No, wait, 1,800 points. That's 1,800 uh, nodes, which means that the machine, the cutting machine will take a while to both process the, the file coming in and also will probably take a while to cut out um, simply because it's a lot of um, data. The other thing to be aware of is that this is the is the knife and it has a setting as you can see here each of these materials that I'm using has a different thickness uh, the white needs to be set to about two uh, one to two in fact uh, the pink needs to be set to four and the blue I think requires a six and I may have to test that um, and the reason for this is because the goal is to be able to etch the design into the the vinyl uh, but not cut through the actual plastic backing. So there's a there's a transparent backing on this. So you need to be able to cut through it uh, without actually uh, cut through the vinyl without actually cutting through the actual backing. And the reason for that is because you want to be able to place the designs uh, and whittle out all of the pieces that you don't want to be transferred. Um, and then once you have it on a plastic backing, you can register it, i.e. you can position the design correctly on top of each, each of the layers that you have. Um, you, you will have to experiment if you use a knife like this to figure out exactly how much, um, how deep the cut needs to go. Okay, so now that I've got a piece of it cut, uh, the, the next job is to wh whittle it down. Um, you'll probably notice that I had to cut the inverse, and that's because the knife comes down from the top, and you want it to be cutting the vinyl side and not the um, plastic backing side, which does mean that when you're setting the cutter up, you usually have to flip the design. Uh, this is especially important for asymmetrical things like text. The last thing you want is the text to be a mirror image. Um, in this case, I it, like it wouldn't have really mattered whether it was flipped or not, but the Inkscape logo itself would have been flipped and it would have been obvious. Um, so now to take all of the little pieces.
Okay, so now that I have each of the pieces cut out with the cutting mm -hmm. machine, and I have uh, each of the colors, uh, you'll notice that I did a uh, test uh, cut of the blue, because I wasn't quite sure of the settings, uh, but I absolutely nailed the setting. Uh, it was six. Um, but you'll also notice that when I did the big version of the blue, it wouldn't actually stay down on the mat. Uh, it kept on trying to curl around, and so eventually I used some tape. Uh, the problem is, is that I overcompensated uh, moving the design so that I'd avoid the tape. And the very bottom of the hexagonal um, comes off the, the side. So, you know what? These things are never per perfect, uh, and it adds a bit of uh, a hu human touch. Uh, so it'll probably have a slight flattening at the bottom, like it's been just shorn off. Oh, that's fine. Uh, so now that I have each of the pieces, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug the iron in, and I'm going to uh, apply it to the T-shirt uh, by applying each of the layers in succession. Um, I'm going to do the blue first, because that gives the, the fr framework for the rest of it. And then I'm going to add the uh, pink and then I'm going to add the white on top. It's very important that the white goes on last because it is sitting on top of the blue, uh, while the pink is actually sitting on the T-shirt directly. Right, so now that we've finished, I've uh, left this overnight so that it can set. You leave it overnight so you can wash it in the washing machine. You can see this is this is the result. It's a lovely, lovely t-shirt, what do you think? I even used the, <clears throat> the test pattern on, on the back. So um, this t-shirt, I made it. Um, because I want to offer it to my supporters this year for helping me grow this pro project. Um, now, I only have one t-shirt. Unfortunately, I'd love to be able to give all of my um, supporters a t-shirt each. Um, so what I'm going to do is, if you want this t-shirt, it's a men's large. Um, comment, let me know. And what I'll do is I'll put all of your names in a hat. And a hat. Uh, yeah, I have more than one, and uh, we will. I'll, I'll draw. I'll draw a name, and then whoever the, the winner is, I will uh, wrap this up and send it to to you. It um, it probably will arrive after Christmas, so bear that in mind. Um, and it is sparkly pink, so you know, make sure that you 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 like the design. Um, and I just want to thank everybody for. Um, you know, pushing me for forwards this year to uh, get this Patreon um, set up for sponsoring me. If you contribute to me financially um, and helping me try and push Inkscape for forwards into a direction um, that we all want to see. Um, so with that, have a, a happy Yuletide, have a Merry Chris Christmas and a wonderful holiday se season. And I'll see you next week.